Hello and welcome. This is going to be a quick little video. I hope to go over this sort of thing more in depth in the future, but this is a quick demonstration and expl explanation. Uh, so here we have uh, three little boxes, but just consider these as different parts of a page that you want on different tabs. And these buttons will control what tabs are shown at a time. Um, right now, they don't do anything. I can click on each one of these, nothing happens. And you can see all three. So what we want to do is we want to load the page, show only one of these at a time, one of these sections, and then have those buttons flip through those sections depending on which one you click. Uh, so real quick, this is the code for this. It's very simple, I threw it together real quick. Uh, I am gonna be using uh, Bootstrap and jQuery just to make things uh, bootstraps make things look nice and jQuery because that's what I'm used to working with. Um, but of course, everything done in jQuery can be done in plain JavaScript if that's what you prefer. It's just not how I'm going to be doing it. So, uh, if you look real quick here, here are our sections. I give them each an individual ID of either sec1, sec2, or sec3. Of course, you can call them whatever you would like. And then each one has a class. Uh, the container class is just part of uh, Bootstrap, but I also gave them a class of section. So what we can do now, if we go back to our web browser here and open up our console here, I can say in here, dollar sign, parentheses, quotation marks, dot means class. And I can say anything with a class of section, of course you gotta spell things properly, section, I can say dot hide. And that will hide all of them. Now again, they each have their own individual IDs, so I can give them the ID. So again, dollar sign inside parentheses, or, uh, yeah, parentheses and quotation marks here, uh, pound, dollar sign, hashtag, whatever you want to call it, means ID, and I'll say like section one, I can say dot show, and it will so sh show section one. If I say show section two, it will show section two, and again, hiding anything with the class will hide all of them. So what we can do is we can say hide them all, and then real quick after that, we can say, um, section one dot show. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna hide all of them real quick and then show whichever one I tell it to. But it's gonna happen so quick you're not gonna see that. So there we go, we're showing section one. And now I can say section two. So it's gonna hide them all, whatever's visible, and then show section two. And so all we have to do now is program our buttons up here to do exactly that. Now we don't want to write a function for each one of the buttons. Uh, as a general rule in programming, if you're going to type something, uh, some code, you should never type it more than once. If you're going to use it more than once, then it should be in a function of some short sort that is called. So what we're going to do up here is for each one of these buttons, let's go ahead and give it an attribute. An attribute for these objects are things like href or class or ID or name. Those are standard ones, but you can make any attribute you want. So I'm going to create an attribute here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to real quick say, uh, here I'm gonna say sec, sec equals, and for this one I'm gonna say sec one. And I should have put a space in there. But I'm gonna call them section one, section two, and section three, which will correspond with, so this is section one, it will correspond with the ID of this. Section two, ID of this one. Section three, ID of this one. So that way, we know when we press a button, the function can look at that and correlate it to the tab that we want, or in this case, the div tag that we want. So what I'm gonna do in here, once the document is loaded, we're gonna say anytime, anyone, and again, these have class, I gave them a class of sec BNT for section button. So I can say sec BNT. So anytime one of those is clicked, we're gonna run this function. And what are we going to do in here? As we said, we want to, first thing we want to do is find everything with a class of section and hide it. So again, if we restart our page now, if I click any one of these, they're all going to disappear. So far, so good. Now we want to get this attribute here of sec. So what we can say is, we'll create a variable, we'll call it var sec equals, and then we'll say inside dollar sign parentheses, no quotation marks, this dot at for attribute and in here we'll say sec so it's saying look at this which is the button that's being clicked look at its attribute of sec and set our variable in this function sec equal to that we can check that by saying console log and sec with no quotation marks there 
because it's a variable, not a string. So, well, I guess it's a string variable. But So now when I click one of these, they should all disappear, but we'd also see down in our console here which button is being clicked and what section it's correlating to. We can get rid of our console log now because we've already checked it. And what I can do is, just like before, we can say pound for the ID, but then outside the quotations, plus sec, which is going to be this variable right here, which is the sec attribute for that button. And again, I'm calling it sec, short for section. You can call it whatever you want. I can say dot show. So now I save that. I rerun this. We see all our sections. Now I can see section one, section two, section three. And I have just these little boxes, but it can be a whole page worth of stuff. Uh, for example, I can come in here and I'll just copy this twice or three times. How about that? So now we have section one is these three, section two, section three. So again, it could be tables, it could be pictures, it could be cells, it could be whatever, whatever you want. Um, but the only thing we have now is that all the sections show up when we refresh the page. We don't necessarily want that. Let's go ahead and close our developers console there. So all we're gonna do is up here is we're gonna say when the document's ready, when the document loads, we will say hide all of them. And then we will show whichever one we want by default which could be section one or it could be section two, which, whichever section we want. Let's say we want section two by default. <clears throat> so what's gonna happen is when the page loads, once the page loads, it's going to hide all those sections. And notice our buttons aren't in those sections. Uh, so you can have a header and a footer and some other stuff that's always on the page, but anything that has the class of section is being hidden. And then it's gonna go, okay, what has the ID of section two, which with an ID, there should only be one object. And we're gonna show that. So we'll save that. Oops, I quit out of it. Let's go ahead and go back here. Now we'll refresh this page. And it says, hey, this is another section. So that's section two. So if I hit section one, there's section one, section three, section two. And again, it's whatever section you want to show at the beginning. I can make section three the one we show if we want. So section three is shown at first. I go two, three. And that's a simple way to make little tabs to choose what's being displayed. And there's a way to put animations on these so they slide in and out or maybe accordion style. Uh, but real, what we're doing is just real quick, boop, boop, they're there. Um, and that's it. Again, this is a, just a quick look at this. But I mean, uh, this is all, you know, HTML down here. The only uh, code that we're writing is, you know, these six lines, seven lines right here uh, saying to hide and show what we want when a button's clicked. So again, quick and easy way to do tabs uh, without any special plugins or anything. Well, I mean, we're using um, jQuery and Bootstrap, but you can do this with pure JavaScript, the same thing, just it's a little bit longer. You have to say document, find object or element by ID and give it the ID. Um, I just prefer using jQuery. And uh, I hope you found this useful. Visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.